Special thanks to Darnell Rose for keeping the Geek Group's video production moving with their superior quality casters. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today, we're on the autopsy set where we're not actually gonna take things apart. Okay, we're gonna take it apart, but we're gonna do it digitally because trying to get one of these apart is not the easiest thing in the world. They build them pretty well and they're never designed to come apart. What we're looking at today is casters because as you may have noticed, we stopped making videos for about a month or two as we tore down our entire production studio overhauled everything, installed new floors, painted the walls, hung new lights, ran microphone, video cables everywhere, and part of that was building the awesome new sets. And you probably just saw the other video where we talked about how we made this set. Well, because of the dimensions of the room and the way we do everything, we had a weird set of circumstances come into play. We wanted to be able to do dolly and truck shots without being confined to tracks, so we needed a really nice, high-class, smooth floor that we could roll tripods on and get really good shots. We got that. Thank you, Armstrong. And then we wanted to be able to move sets around on that floor so that we could pack as many different sets as possible and do a tight little space. Well, our sets aren't built like normal theater sets where they're just a tiny little flimsy walled room. This is built with two by fours and drywall and everything. So moving it around, kind of a tricky thing to pull off. We thought about casters and we looked at stuff like this. And when you think casters, this is usually what you think about. You think little things with just a pin and a hard rubber wheel and a flimsy little frame. And this is probably good for like 50, 60 pounds, you know, something like that. But these, that's really great if you want to move an office chair. It's not so good if you want to move a room. So then we got thinking about casters. Now, these are used for a little bit more than an office chair. These are actually used for our uh, scaffolding system. But our scaffolding system isn't really that heavy, so we figured if we got to move the scaffolding system, which might maybe weigh a thousand pounds with people on it, well, a room weighs a lot more than that. So, mm, and these are gonna chew up the floor. So we did some research, and we called the really cool people at Darnell Rose, and they helped a lot. Turns out, the caster that we needed is only that big. And we need a few of them. This particular caster here will hold 200 pounds. This is one of their Cartmaster series, and they weren't designed for moving rooms around. They were actually designed for the carts that you see on airplanes. When, you, when you're sitting on an airplane and the flight attendant comes by with the cart with all the drinks on it and stuff like that, these are the casters they use on airplanes for the carts. They're stainless steel. Well, there's a stainless steel model. There's also the galvanized model. All the inner parts are stainless steel, so it resists corrosion, so water, moisture, cleaning products, stuff like that aren't going to mess it up. But where it gets really cool is the wheels. Now, the wheels on this are designed with a two-layer construction, not just two separate wheels, but there's two layers of rubber in there. And there's the hard inner layer so that they don't deform under load. And then there's the soft outer layer so they don't scratch up the floors and we can roll these casters around on our brand new $20,000 floor in here and never have to worry about scratching it up, which is really cool. Another neat aspect to it is you'll notice there's two wheels, not just one. Now, with just one wheel, when this caster turns, if you change directions from here to here, there's, it's like putting your thumb down and trying to twist. You're gonna, you're gonna scratch up the floor. By having two wheels, what happens is the axle the main center spindle is between the wheels, so when they turn, they're actually turning really easily in a tight little circle. They don't just spin in place, they're actually moving around an orbital path. So this also protects our floor, which is pretty cool. You'll notice that on casters, the center pin on top, which is where everything pivots from, is not directly over the wheels. Like here's the axle of the wheels, and the center pin is way off, like this far, and if it was right on top, when you tried to change direction, it would just drag the wheels sideways. By having it back, it's, it gives you the equivalent of a rake angle. So what that allows is, as this moves from 90 degrees off to headed that way, if we apply force in this direction, the wheels track behind it. You'll see there's an instant where it has to change its direction and make up its mind the direction it wants to go. 
but that's why this has to be off from there because if it wasn't, if you didn't have this space between them from the main pivot point back to the wheels, it wouldn't do that. It would just, it'd just lock up and want to go sideways and buckle over. So that's why they do that. Um, you'll also see this in your bicycle. If you look at your bicycle, there's a distance between the front axle and the main bearing, the triple tree bearing for your handlebars. If the, the closer those are together, the more unstable your bike is, which is why the guys on choppers or on the really raked out bicycles, because we're on the west side and some dudes like to customize their bikes like that, they're really hard to turn because the bike, by laying way back like that with that big rake angle, wants to point straight up all on its own. It makes it a lot more difficult to drive in the city, but it's really cool for highway driving on a big chopper because you can just park it right on the center line and let go and the bike will pretty much stay right there. If the road's banked like a lot of roads are, the bike will actually follow the curves as it goes. It's kind of cool like that. So that's why they have the offset. Also up on the top here, you'll see that this area is completely sealed in. It's one piece right from the bottom and there's only a tiny little hair gap at the top. And inside that gap is another piece of steel and another piece and it's all built in together. There's a lot of parts that go into making one of these. The reason for that is to keep out debris. You wanna keep all the dust and, and debris and little particle stuff out of there that you can because these are designed to work on a floor all day long, so there's dust and stuff and a million people walking around because it's an airplane. And you've got a lot of cleaning products and stuff like that, so you need to keep all that out. So the goal here is that this is a happy little fortress where you wanna keep as much as possible out because when it gets in there, it stays there, it collects inside the bearing and it causes things to fail prematurely. That's also why they have this bell shape on the side of the wheels. You can see that the side comes out a little bit and the wheels touch right in the middle, and that's, that's part of their tread guard system. That's to keep stuff out. You don't want this snagging on carpet fibers and things like that, because you'll see it a lot. Like if you look under the bottom of your vacuum cleaner, it picks up all kinds of little hairs and stuff that stay there forever in the wheels. You'll see this on office furniture all the time, especially the really cheap molded plastic wheels. They pick stuff up like that all the time, and every now and then you'll like go to move your chair and it won't move and it like that, and that's, yeah, they wanna keep that from happening because airplanes are expensive. One of the cool bits of elegant engineering that goes into these, when you break this down into its component pieces, the physics involved in designing this is really cool, and we'll take a look here. Well, let's break this down a little bit because as you see, you've got your 200 pounds pushing here, and now you've got a lever because remember that rake angle? This is way back, so when you start looking the difference between this line here and then the distance over, the numbers get really big, really fast. So this, the yoke part, has to be all heat treated and this big plate with its 200 pounds is pushing down and focusing all that through the yoke on this little area down here. Now remember, this is bolted to the bottom, so the, the twisting load, the, the axle out here is getting just a straight up and down load, but the twisting load, as this is trying to lever off, is focused down on the swivel bearing, the radial thrust bearing in here, these, this side over here is trying to push up, this side's trying to pull down. And it's a non-trivial amount of force involved here with 200 pounds on top, so it can't be just a cheap little ball bearing. Like when you look at the cheaper casters like this, that's just a little cheap ball bearing and they put a rivet on the bottom to try and hold it together. This only has bearings on the top. When you look on this one, it's designed as a radial thrust bearing, so this, you can't peel it off. It's, there's no play in it at all. It's absolutely rigid for that whole bearing. Like the slightest bit of movement moves everything else. And that takes a lot of work because this has to be able to design not just to twist, but to have this be levered against with 200 pounds all day long and spin around in any direction and be able to handle all of that. The top of the thing, we've been talking about the mounting plate. And as you look at the mounting plate, you can see that the holes on there are in a standard universal pattern. So if you're designing your cart and you've built your cart and you're like, ah, these casters are a little bit too big, I can go with something smaller, then you can swap them out and not have to change all your bolt holes and everything. It just works. So it's neat. It's just, I just like the whole design of it. It's something that I want to take the time and break down for people because as people who like to build things, it's pretty likely that you're gonna to wanna to put it on casters at some point. And casters are one of those things that those of us that build stuff tend not to think a lot about. Casters are something that you just, oh, I'll just grab these out of the junk box and it looks about the right size. And you just, you do this by eyeball and back of the envelope and nobody ever really puts a lot of thought into it unless they're building something with 10,000 of them. So I wanted to take and do a video and just talk about the basic elegance of engineering in casters and get you guys to think about them a little bit. 
So check them out. Go to Darnell Rose. That's their website right there. And check them out. They sell casters for everything. They do. You, check out the big giant ones. I'm not even going to get into it, but just check out the big giant ones. They do casters. You can find wheels for ratings that you never imagined possible. I don't know what's rolling on those wheels, but I want one. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Thank you for hanging out with me and taking a look at the basics of casters. As always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.